NPR. Speciaal voor iedereen. Curiosity lo, lo he llamado así porque, porque me inspira esta idea, me inspira esta idea de, de ser consciente de nuestra ignorancia y de, y de estar hasta cierto punto orgullosa de ella y entonces um, de que de ahí nazca una curiosidad que trae, eso es, lo cre creo que es un antídoto contra la arrogancia, ¿no? No, no se puede ser arrogante y curiosa a la vez. Um, entonces mi disco no tiene influencias um, directas, diría, pero sí esta idea general, que obviamente está presente en la política hoy en día y en, y en tantas otras partes. raíces de agricultores de Castilla y, y trabajadores de una fábrica en, en Cataluña, o sea que, pero sí que han sido gente muy humilde, entonces se ha tenido ese, esa idea de, de, que, de que somos ignorantes en muchas cosas, ¿no? Mis, mis padres se conocieron en, en Barcelona, los dos fueron a estudiar allí, aunque mi, mi madre es de Salamanca, que es, está tipo a 10 horas en coche de Barcelona. Y, y claro, se movieron ahí en los años 70, finales de los 60, 70, que estaba como, estaba muy caliente el ambiente con, con, uh, con el final de la dictadura. Y sí, en realidad... Creo que son tan humildes que mi padre tampoco me ha explicado mucho, mucho de, de lo que hacían, pero, pero sí, o sea, se metía en, en follones potentes de antifranquistas, ¿no? Con los grises y, y, y a correr y a esconderse. Y, y eso sí, siempre se me ha, yo creo que se, de alguna manera u otra se, se, se ha traducido y siempre han sido muy comprometidos políticamente, ¿no? Y, y estoy hasta cierto punto orgulloso de, de ese legado, digamos. Mostly like a big part of my life. I don't know if the whole thing, but um, yeah, I could um, spend most of my, my energy either with the piano and the music and with tennis. I was going for like a professional and uh, training, training every day, playing competitions, playing internationals. I was, I had even a scholarship from the Catalan Federation. Maybe I got decently good and you know, like uh, as a professional. 
I had to choose um, because both disciplines uh, require like all all your energy, all your time, all your dedication. At least, at least that's how I understand them, or how I think. Then you can dig deeper into into your potential, into where how far you can go. No, it was a very hard decision actually, and but I'm very happy with it. I, I eventually chose to to dedicate myself to music and leave tennis more as a, as a hobby. I chose music uh, at that moment because music always brought me joy. Like 99.9% of the times is joy. It was super hard for years. I had, I don't know if to call them doubts, but uh, you know, it's, it's always there. Like, I guess like in, as in every tough decision that you make in life, no? but it's always the what if, could ha what would have happened if, if I could have chosen the, the other thing. Kind of like, who, who do you prefer, your, your, your mother or your father? It's uh, not, that, not that extreme, <laughs> but kind of like, you know, I love music, but I also love tennis and the other way around. And when you choose something, it feels that you're like, you know, getting rid of something else. And I had to work out through the years, this feeling is, no, I chose that and I still love this. And it's just that we have one life and you have to make decisions. es algo que se puede trabajar, o sea, tú puedes ser proactivo en ser curioso e intentar eso que cualquier cosa te provoque, ¿no? O, o ser tú proactivo a, a, a ser curioso, ¿no? Preguntar a la gente de dónde vienen, de cuál es su historia, um, aprender de cualquier cosa, ¿no? Por ejemplo, yo vivo en Ámsterdam, pues me intereso por, por la historia de la ciudad, me intereso por, por, por la gente, ¿no? La manera como es la, toda la gente internacional de aquí. Eso creo que, te, que al, al final te hace crecer como persona, ¿no? Y, consecuentemente, como músico. Creo que últimamente siempre hay como un, la tendencia es un poco al rechazo, a la... A, a, a algo nuevo, ¿no? Y, y yo creo que eso es, es una cosa, no sé si natural, pero que tenemos que ser conscientes y, y evitarla, ¿no? A las cosas, a, a cuando algo no se sabe, se debe reconocer y, y estar tranquilo con ello. Y entonces descubrir, tener la curiosidad, de decir, ok, esto no lo conozco, pero voy a, voy a ver... ¿no? Voy, a, voy a aprender y voy a descubrir y eso me va a hacer crecer como persona y en conjunto como so sociedad. ¿no?
Sometimes I see the piano, it's, it's, it's a huge instrument, it's very big and, and, and you have endless possibilities. It can feel a bit like a beast. It's, it's really hard to, 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 to command it, to get in control of it. It's definitely scary, but at the same time exciting, and I don't think I'll be completely in control of it ever. It has a lot of possibility. It can sound huge, it can sound super small and piano and delicate. It can sound super low and aggressive or high or fast or a lot of density in the sound or at the same time super little. So it's really like a, you know, like you're moving a, a huge animal and it just, you can, if, if you know, if you learn a bit how to, how to command it, you can make it do these like completely different things. Yeah, the lessons with David for sure tame or at least help to, to control a bit the beast and to, to get to know a bit the insights so I know how it reacts when I do something or when I do that or what works better in some times or others. So he's 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 quite, quite a bit ahead of me in, in controlling the beast. <laughs> so that's why it's so inspiring to, to, to see him and, and have lessons with him. Well, Chavi was already quite far, but I think he wanted a little more. So somehow he asked if, to play for me. And to my huge surprise, he brought two tremendously big pieces and played them actually very well. I wanted something more, and, and I was amazed how, how, yeah, how much dedication you put in that first lesson. I mean, I was already at, the, at, at this school, this conservatorium in the jazz department, which has helped me a lot also, but um, I wanted some, like, to dig a bit deeper into this classical music wall, and definitely felt it. But the most, I would say, the thing that I always find most important also when, when whatever I hear you do is there is enormous warmth in what you do. You really, I know all musicians love their business, but some can show it better than other sides. When you improvise in, in your jazz surroundings, then you have to be in the moment because there, there is yes. no way that you cannot really do it in the moment. And of course, our big problem is that we've practiced the thing so long that it's hard to be in the moment. And then if you have the ability to be able to improvise at least or try it, even if it doesn't go good, it makes that you, when you go then on stage, there's a certain, ah, yeah, it could have been different. No? As a teacher, one is a bit of a vampire always. No? You want to, to learn a lot from your students. And I'm always in awe of people that improvise well and that um, also make their own material. Because our heritage, we spoke about it a lot in our lessons, our classical heritage is actually the same. No? We, in, in 200 years ago, it was normal that you compose and play and improvise. And, but it kind of got a little bit uh, dissected everything and then there's these people like Xavi that in the context of what they play that for them it's all the same. It was incredibly interesting how that transferred to um, also the classical style I would say.
from a jazz pianist, sometimes you have so many things to, or improviser, so many things to, to think about at the same time, like tempo, like being, and um, the harmony, kind of like a bit of a perspective because you're composing in real time, so you, you know, it's not like you're only playing that chord now, but uh, you're saying, no, like, I see that I'm gonna modulate there, so I'm gonna there, or it has to have a, a meaning, or it's not, I cannot stay here for five minutes and then only this for two, so you have a bit of a general perspective. And, uh, and then, you, since you have all the things in, in your brain, sometimes you don't have space <laughs> to dig deeper into, ah, but what if I play this note or this couple, you know, a bit, or if I give a bit more importance to this one until this one, and then, um, so that's, I think, what I've, and I'm trying to translate. So when I play a, a, a song, uh, or a piece, I just, I can get a bit more into, into it. Quiero transmitir un mensaje en, en diferentes niveles. Por una parte, me gusta que sea una, una música hasta cierto modo alegre y que de, con, con luz, sabes que tenga mucha luz, pero a la vez que tenga mucho, muchos niveles de profundidad y que esté, está muy bien pensada y, y que tenga, tenga mucho sentido artístico. Y a la vez también creo que eh, aún más a día de hoy hacer, hacer arte y hacer mm, música de, que entiendo de, de calidad ¿no? o estar como comprometido en hacer arte de calidad es también una reivindicación prácticamente política ¿no? en, en un mundo que parece cada vez más superficial y más individualista. Parece como que comprometerte en que el arte que hagas es de calidad, me parece un acto de reivindicación también.
la, la curiosidad a, a, a nivel musical o a nivel pianístico lo traduzco en, en, también en mi búsqueda, ¿no? Soy curioso de ver de hasta dónde, dónde, dónde me puede llevar una cierta canción, una cierta melodía, una cierta armonía, como estas ganas de, de investigación, ¿no? En el buen sentido de la palabra y de, y de querer buscar hasta dónde hasta dónde puedo llevar esa, esa música que estoy creando. <risa> 